Hi, everybody. Um, good afternoon. I'm going to wait for some more of you to come on live, but if you are just joining me, I'm digging. My lips are dry. It's Mardi Gras. I've been in the middle of Mardi Gras. So today we are going to be talk about, talking about ways to measure your health that do not involve your weight or your BMI. This is a topic that is near and dear to my heart because so many of my patients and my students come to me in the Galveston diet and they are frustrated with a number on the scale and they have been told by other health professionals and trainers and fitness professionals that their weight is an indicator of their health and that um, they need to lose weight, lose weight, lose weight without giving any concrete information about how to do that successfully or... Um, not really looking at them as a whole person, just focusing on their weight um, as a measure of their health. And I'm here to tell you that there are many, many ways to measure your health that are actually have been shown to be better overall health indicators than your weight or the BMI that you have been assigned. You know, the problem with BMI is it does not take into account your body fat percentage or your muscle mass. And so if you have someone that is has very low muscle mass, their BMI is going to look better, though they may have a higher fat percentage, especially visceral fat, which is a not great indicator of health. And so these are some of the tests and things that you can do at home um, to, uh, to help keep track of your health. Um, and I'm going to be going through those with you in detail. But in the meantime, if you're just joining, we have over 200 followers live. Hi, I'm Dr. Mary Claire Haver. I'm um, the creator and founder of The Galveston Diet. I am a medical doctor, board certified in obstetrics and gynecology. I'm also a culinary medicine specialist certified um, using food as medicine um, by the Gold Ring Center for Culinary Medicine at Tulane University. So this is basically a 60 course, 60 hour graduate level coursework only offered to physicians, physicians assistants, pharmacists, nurse practitioners, and registered dietitians. Um, it's a really awesome program. If you guys are watching and you are at that level of education and are interested in learning more about culinary medicine, I highly advise you look at the program. It's one of the best things that I've ever done. So if you're just joining me, double tap the screen to like this video. TikTok occasionally asks me to pause and reintroduce myself because we get so many new viewers. The double taps help drive the algorithm, which we are all a slave to here on TikTok. I being no example. You can even power tap. Okay, so if you want to get real fancy, you can just sit there and keep tap, 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 tapping on the screen. A heart will pop up under my name and then it will get bigger and bigger and slide across the screen. It's called a power tap. So um, yes, I am very proud of my credentials. Thank you so much. It's something that I've worked my entire life uh, for. I'm actually, my undergraduate degree is in geology. <laughs> And I started my PhD um, in earth science, but had a change of heart and decided to go to medical school after that. So here we are today. So now that I've got an, a 330 of you on the audience, let's talk about ways to measure your health that are simple, quick, and easy and have nothing, nothing, nothing to do with your weight because your weight has very little to do with your health. It's one of the poorest indicators of health that we have. So keep tapping the screen to like this video. Please um, oh, comment, there's a QA and a section and feel free to share this video with someone you think it would be helpful to. Okay, so I, if you see me glancing to the side, I always have my notes. Um, I usually come to these lives prepared with notes. So they're on my laptop next door. So, um, so we all know the struggle of the scale. I am, I am absolutely a victim of this myself. I made the scale. I, the scale, this, I was the scales bitch. <laughs> I mean, I used to weigh myself every day. I was obsessed with that number. And so, um, and it really took me going through menopause, gaining the weight, learning how to lose the weight through anti-inflammatory nutrition, and then getting culinary medicine certified in order to learn how to break that addiction to the scale. I really don't care what I weigh. I use other measures of health. So, I mean, it's very, very tempting to focus on the number on the scale, but remember your weight fluctuates on a day-to-day -day, and those day-to-day -day weight fluctuations is usually just water, fluid shifting in and out of your tissues, something in medicine we call third spacing. So your weight does not tell the full story of your health. There are people who are normal weight who are dying every day from chronic disease, okay? Um, and the number alone does not count for how much muscle you have. The more muscle you have, the healthier you are. Um, and it doesn't tell how much fat you have. Those are much better indicators of health. Fortunately, we have other ways to help us determine those things. 
Um, okay, so number one, one of the top things that you can do for health is to check your blood pressure. Um, your blood pressure, you can get simple, easy monitors now. I, I've seen them on Amazon for $10, $15. Um, of course, your doctor's blood pressure scale is always gonna be the most accurate, but keeping up on a day-to-day basis of your blood pressure. Um, you know, high blood pressure is what we call the silent killer. You don't have a lot of symptoms. I don't mean to scare you into paying attention. Um, but when someone has high blood pressure, the force exerted against your artery walls is much larger than it should be. Okay. This extra pressure puts a strain on your heart and it increases your risk of heart attack or myocardial infarction, um, heart disease, or even stroke. And it doesn't present with obvious symptoms until it's very, 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 very late in the process. Um, so you really should be proactive about measuring it as much as you can in your life. Um, okay, everybody double tap the screen to like the video. We're getting more and more views. Thank you, TikTok, for sharing this on the algorithm. Um, okay, so the good news is there's many, many steps that you can take to lower blood pressure. And what are those? Um, before taking medication, of course, many of you, d despite whatever you do to lower your blood pressure naturally, may still end up on medication. That's probably a big familial component um, to why you have high blood pressure. Um, okay, so your reading will give you two numbers. The upper number is called systolic and the lower number is called diastolic. Generally, you want your systolic blood pressure to be less than 120 and your diastolic under 180. You'll want it, both numbers to fall in line because if your diastolic reading is in the healthy range and systolic is elevated, the re, it's still a health risk because you want both numbers. So 120 over 80 is your ultimate goal below those two numbers, okay? Um, so what are some things that we can do to lower blood pressure naturally? One, um, quit smoking. Number two, exercise on a regular basis has been shown. Number three, lower your stress and anxiety levels. That has absolutely been shown. Number four, limit your alcohol intake. Have all been shown um, to be effective ways. Okay, so that was number one. Number two way, a number two measure of health, this is something easy that you can do at home, you don't need any equipment, is what we call your resting heart rate, your resting heart rate. So as it says your resting heart rate, you are at rest. So the best time to do it is in the morning before you get out of bed. You wake up, it's okay to sit up, and you measure your pulse. Set a timer on your watch or your phone for 60 seconds, put your finger on your carotid, on your wrist, you know, here, or even on the top of your foot, and then measure how many beats per minute. Normally, a resting heart rate should be between 60 and 100 beats per minute. That should be healthy, that should be normal, okay? But if you're a badass and in really good shape, it could be less than that. Um, However, a high resting rate, also called tachycardia, is a health risk, and that's something you need to call call your doctor about. If your resting heart rate is, you know, above 100, that is just something you should contact your doctor for immediately. Um, so, monitoring your average levels can be a really good indicator of your overall health. Resting heart rates tend to rise when you're stressed, when you're exercising less, or when you're not getting enough sleep. Okay. Um, all right, number three is your heart rate recovery. So this is something fun you can also do at home. Um, your heart rate recovery is also a really important measure of health. Um, so it measures how good a shape you're in if you work out a lot. And so your recovery should be fast. So the faster your heart rate recovers, the better it is for you. So to test it, you want to get your heart rate up, okay, by, you want to run, jump, run in place, uh, jumping jacks, do something that's going to raise your heart rate. If you're reading this at your desk, you can get up and do it. <laughs> your coworkers might think you're crazy. You can do it. I challenge you to do it right now. So get up and do something for a couple of minutes to get that heart rate up, okay? So then you're going to measure your heart rate while you're still breathing heavy, okay? You, you should be like, <sighs> okay? And then wait two minutes, set your timer for two minutes, and then do it again, okay? Measure it again. Then you're gonna subtract the two numbers, the high number from the low number. Your heart rate recovery should be between 22 and 52 beats per minute, um, though you're in the clear for a major risk if it's anywhere above 12, okay? So the higher um, heart rate recoveries um, are okay, but you know your heart rate should come down within two minutes of stopping of stopping exercising. So that's a really fun thing you can do right now if you have a watch or a way to measure your heart rate. Do some jumping jacks, up and down, up and down, measure your heart rate, set the timer for two minutes, measure it again, and see what that gap is. You're shooting for 22 to 52 beats per minute. 
Okay, so that was number three. Number four, the fourth, this is one of my favorite. This is what we do in the Galveston diet. This is a great measure of heart health. So if you're just joining me, I'm getting a notification from TikTok, forgive me. I am Dr. Mary Claire Haver. I'm the creator and founder of the Galveston diet. I am also a board certified OB-GYN, medical doctor and um, nutritionist. So I love marrying my passion of women's health as well as nutrition and just giving common sense tips and techniques for people to have their best health ever. I hate, 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 hate using the scale as a measure of health. I think it's detrimental. I think there's much better ways that people can be healthy at all weights on the scale. And just because you're normal weight does not mean that you are healthy. And we have to stop fixing in on that and fixating on how we want to live our lives as healthy people. So um, I also appreciate the sentiment that I'm an advocate for women. I've gotten some heat from my colleagues in ob who have said that the things I advocate for are simply to gain followers and get views and not really because I care about women's health. That was a little painful to hear, but they are entitled to their opinion, but it's not going to stop me from being a women's health advocate. And full disclosure, yes, I have an online wellness program. You can go check it out at galvestondiet.com, but that's not what here what we're talking about today. Um, okay, so ne- this one we teach in the Galveston Diet. I love, love, love this measure of health. It is called the waist-hip ratio. This is all about fat deposition and where we deposit it, okay? This is a huge indicator of health. So if you're just joining, double tap the screen to like the video. If you think I'm a great health advocate, share this video with someone who you think would be important to and tell those mean girls to leave me alone. (laughs) Um, So the waist dip ratio is Really simple do. You need a tape measure and probably a calculator because I am not good at math. Um, Not good at math, but you're going to measure your waist, okay? Look, I've had children. I'm going to show you what a 53-year-old post-baby belly looks like. You're going to measure your weight at the smallest part, okay? For me, it's not my belly button, okay? Because I, it's up here. So you're going to measure your waist at the smallest part, Okay, I'm not showing anything I shouldn't show. And then you're going to measure your hips at the widest part, usually where your butt is the biggest, okay? So waist and hip, waist and hip, those two measurements, all right? Um, Those, oh, thank you for sharing the video. Oh, everybody, double tap, we're almost to 10,000 likes. Let's keep this going. So waist to ratio, ratio, super powerful. I cannot tell you how many of my students have come to me and said, thank God you told me about this because... Every appointment I go to, they tell me I'm obese, but otherwise my blood pressure is normal. I run every day. I eat healthy. And this is, you know, but my weight is, you know, I'm very muscular and they're telling me that I'm obese and that that makes me unhealthy. But the waist to ratio is a much more powerful indicator of health than your, than your, um, Weight alone, it doesn't take into account muscle mass. What the waist tip ratio tells us is where your fat is deposited. And we, what, so remember one of the things about fat deposition is that the visceral fat, which is the intra-abdominal fat, which makes us big here at the waist, okay? Not when we can squinch stuff. I'm talking when you look pregnant, okay? The waist tip ratio is a measure. It's a pretty good indicator. It's not perfect for visceral fat. Visceral fat is the fat that is deposited around our organs and it is metabolically active. It pumps out cytokines and it is linked to increased risk of heart disease, cancer, stroke, diabetes, all of it. Okay, seven of the top 10 causes of disease. So I will come on live later and do a whole talk about you know, evidence-based ways, at least for women, that's the research I read. I tend to stick to those studies because I'm an OB-GYN and that's what I do, um, of how to decrease visceral fat. I have several TikToks about that, but right now we're just kind of talking about how to measure health. Um, so waist to ratio. So what are the numbers? Everybody wants to know. For a woman, you're... Point zero, oh sorry, 0.85, 0.85, you're doing pretty good, okay? If And for a man, it's 0.9. If your waist tip ratio is greater than 1.0, that can be, that's usually a sign that you have increased visceral fat. So in the Galveston diet with our students, we have them measure their waist tip ratio from the beginning and then track it like every month or so with their progress because that is way, way more powerful for them than just the scale because a lot of them are exercising, have a large amount of muscle mass. And in my patients, I actually have an in-body scanner that allows me to get a really good, it actually measures visceral fat. So, um, 
So, so you go, so a woman, as she goes through menopause and perimenopause, her fat distribution starts to change for most of us. It stops being subcutaneous and you start getting more visceral fat deposition. And remember, visceral fat behaves very differently than subcutaneous fat. Subcutaneous fat tends to respond better to the calories in, calories out restriction, whereas visceral fat actually responds better to the quality of our nutritional profile, things that lower cortisol, things that lower insulin, and also, um, to stress reduction. Um, it all kind of works together. So, um, so just you are at higher risk for health problems if your waist hip ratio is greater than one. If it's less than 8.85, you um, that that's pretty good health indicator, okay? It's not perfect, but it's way better than the number on the scale and being called obese when they don't take into account where your fat is or your muscle mass. Subcutaneous fat, well, rarely kills you. I mean, you can have a lot of it that um, leads to wear and tear on your joints and muscles, but it's not inflammatory. The inflammatory fat is the intra-abdominal fat, the visceral fat, and it's a very different animal than the subcutaneous fat. So, okay. All right, next thing is cholesterol levels. This is something I measure on every single patient who comes to see me in my wellness center. It's such an important measure. Um, Let's see, cholesterol levels, um, one in six Americans has high cholesterol, according to a recent Harvard study, um, making them, so with high cholesterol, you're twice as likely to develop heart disease. Um, but all cholesterol isn't bad, right? Um, it plays an incredible important role in our body. It's a precursor to many of our sex hormones and steroids. It's found in every soul. I mean, cholesterol in and of itself is not bad. We need it to survive. It's important, okay? However, um, of you know, a diet low in processed foods is linked to lower cholesterol levels. Um, exercising and quitting smoking also help. Also making sure you're getting enough fiber in your diet. And for a woman, that's 25 grams per day. And for a man, that is um, 38 grams per day. Now, as a woman, I push my fiber intake to 35. There's no upper limit that says that. Um, it is dangerous. So if you're just joining me, double tap the screen. Hi, I'm Dr. Mary Claire Haver. TikTok asked me periodically to come on and reintroduce myself, let everyone know what we're talking about. It helps to drive the algorithm. Um, double tapping the screen, uh, likes and shares. Um, okay, so other things that you can measure are inflammation. Inflammation. So this one's a little tricky. Um, inflammation is another necessary body process. It helps us get rid of viruses and disease and helps us recover faster with an injury. However, it's a fundamental immune process avoiding white blood cells, but we can over, our body can overdo it and you end up with a chronic stage of inflammation. It can turn against you. The most you know well-known of these are autoimmune diseases. Um, inflammation is also linked to stress response. So if you notice more swelling, it could be a good indicator of health, including mental health, meditation, taking daily walks, getting better sleep can all help you stress relieve on a daily basis. Um, how do you measure inflammation? There are some blood tests that can be, but they're, they're kind of nonspecific. We know that you're inflamed, but we don't know why. And so when I see those markers inflamed in the Galveston diet, we always start with nutrition first. We institute the nutritional changes in the Galveston diet, and then we remeasure to see if we can get those levels to come down. Um, Inflammation can show up in your body as general achiness, swelling, um, redness, psoriasis, flaring and autoimmune disease. Um, oh, let's see. Chronic bloating can also be a sign of inflammation as well. Um, hang on. I have more notes over here. Let me get out of this guy. One sec. Um, where did it go? I had a really, wait, I have two sets of notes, guys. One second. Okay. Okay. So there are some other ways that you can um, measure your health that have nothing to do with your weight. Um, hydration. So this is a fun one. Any of you guys can do this. Hydration, hydration, hydration is key. How do you know if you're hydrated? Can anybody, I'm looking in the comments, tell me if you know how you're hydrated. Give me some signs or signs of dehydration. Um, oh, you're halfway through Galveston Diet Education. Love this. Welcome to our program. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, okay. Tell me, tell me, I'm looking in the comments, dry skin. Okay, yeah, skin turgor. So if you can like pinch your skin and it stays, um, it stays up like that, that's a sign of dehydration. It's called turgor of the skin. 
pinch your skin, keep going. Your pee is dark yellow, that's my favorite. So hydration in the body was represented by urine that is pale, pale, pale yellow at worst or clear, okay? That is a sign of hydration. So yeah, if you can't cry, if you haven't peed in several hours, those are all ways to know. So um, people can get headaches when they're dehydrated, but one of the quickest, easiest ways is go empty your bladder, look at the color of your urine, and if it's not very pale yellow to clear, then you are dehydrated and you need to start drinking some water. So every time I go to the bathroom, I look at the color of my urine and I'm like, okay, I need to drink some more water because I am a little bit dehydrated. Um, okay, so hydration, hydration, hydration. How much water do you need? So it's basically your your weight, um, your kilogram weight in ounces. So if you weigh 60 kilograms, you need 60 ounces of water per day, okay? Um, 64, 68, so you take, how do you know how many kilograms you weigh? You take your weight divided by 2.2, and that's if you're not exercising. So you need more. If you're losing hydration due to exercise or, or being hot or sweating, then you absolutely are going to need more. So, um, yeah, I'm reading all about the urine. Yeah, so, so word to the wise, when you take your vitamins, especially water-soluble vitamins, so K, A, D, and E are all fat-soluble, but every other vitamin, the Bs, the Cs, those are water-soluble, and so you just pee out what your body doesn't use right away, and so it often turns your urine bright fluorescent yellow. Well, you'll know. I just took my vitamins. This bright yellow urine is due to me taking vitamins. Within an hour or two, it should be flushed out of your system and get better. So if you're just joining me, I'm Dr. Mary Claire Haver. Today we are talking about ways to measure your health that have nothing to do with your weight. Weight is a terrible way. Um, so uh, half your body weight in ounces, so half your body weight in pounds or body weight in kilograms. So you do you, it's 2.2 is the number. Um, so double tap the screen to like this video. Please follow me if you don't. I would love to have you part of our Galveston Diet family and share this video with someone who you think it would be helpful for by pressing the little share button. We have 21 shares down here below. Okay. So um, this, okay, so we talked about the waist hip ratio, but even just weight, hip waist circumference is an indicator without doing the hip measurement of belly fat. Visceral fat is a much more accurate predictor of obesity-related disease in the human body than the scale, okay? Um, okay, glass of water, we did that. Blood pressure, I've got my notes, hang on. Um, vegetables eaten, okay, this is a big thing in the Galveston diet. When it comes to diet, the number of fruits and veggies that you eat per day, so if you are like, I eat healthy, I don't know what's going on, da, da, da. We have an inflammation scoring system. So if you go up here to Galveston Diet and you click on the link at the top of my TikTok page, you'll see some boxes and it one is like, you know, we have a sale right now, whatever. But then you'll see, go down to that last box and it will say um, the inflammation quiz. So that quiz is based off of registered dietitian scoring system for inflammation and nutrition. And it can actually give you a score on, on how pro-inflammatory or anti-inflammatory your nutritional choices have been in the last last 24 hours. You can take it as many times as possible. It's going to ask for your email. It's going to put you into an email string. Of course, you can like make up an email. I don't care. But um, they, this will give you all this information on anti-inflammatory food choices and pro-inflammatory food choices. It's just a wonderful source of great information for you to make the healthiest choices possible. And some of the things we asked about were how many colors fruits and veggies did you eat? A big thing in the Galveston diet is eating the rainbow. How many colors of fruits and vegetables did you eat? So for example, today I had blueberries, that's blue. I had an apple, I had some snap peas, that's green. You know, you want to count how many colors because the things that give the fruits and veggies color are things called polyphenols and anthocyanins, and they're all powerful antioxidants and anti-inflammatory, and they each have a purpose in the body. So the biggest variety of fruits and veggies that you eat, the more healthy and less inflammatory those options are going to be for you. Um, okay, so um, yeah, the chemicals that uh, give fruits and vegetables their colors each have their own health benefits. I'm reading from my notes. Skills do not count. Artificial colors and flavors do not count. You're hysterical and they're like, eat the rainbow. <laughs> um, let's see, and, and particularly non-starchy vegetables. So you can get into trouble by like leaning a little too heavy on the starchy side of things. Um, but really eating as many colors, colorful things on your plate as possible from nature, not from Nestle, <laughs> will give you the greatest health benefits out there. Yes, putting spinach in your scrambled eggs, sliding it into your smoothies, adding little fruits and veggies here and there. Um, 
Okay, and then cholesterol levels we talked about. Blood sugar level, fasting, blood glucose test. Again, this probably needs to be done at the doctor's office. Some of you have people who monitor their blood sugars at home. It is not a bad idea for you to check your blood sugar on their machine. And um, your fasting blood sugars, mean fasting for at least eight hours, uh, should be less than 100. Should be less than 100. If it's over that, you need to go see the doctor and have some more testing done. Um, <laughs> hate humans too. You look so familiar. Do you know me from jail? Actually, you might because the uh, university that I did my research, I mean, <laughs> I did my residency at and that I did uh, was a faculty at for 20 years. We had a contract with the Texas Department of TDCJ, the Texas Department of Criminal Justice. And so I took care of a lot of prisoners, mostly female, but occasionally I'd see the males in the hallway. Um, so yeah, it's quite possible that you knew me from jail because I was a healthcare provider in the prison system for almost 20 years. Um, so nice to meet you. All right. Um, all right. People with a normal blood glucose level should get their blood glucose level checked every three years. This is something that I check every single year on patients who come to me. I think it's too important. Um, let's see. All right. Also, another measurement of health is time spent moving. Physical activity is crucial to ladies. Keep our bones strong. Keep osteoporosis and osteopenia at bay. Um, if counting steps motivates you more than going to the gym, then great. I don't care. Just move your body. All this shit that people are posting about this exercise and that exercise and you should be doing hit, you shouldn't be doing that, and no, 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 no. Really, that's just bullshit. And um, unless you're at the level of bodybuilding or training on a professional level, really just get up and move your body. Move your body, move your body. Um, you should enjoy whatever exercise you do. Hey, Blake. Hi, sweet girl. Um, that should be key. That however you move your body brings you joy. Okay, so if that's walking, if that's, you know, treadmill, if that's biking, if that's swimming, if that's tennis, move your heart. But you need to consistently raise your heart rate into a certain zone. So for most of my students who are sedentary, we start with giving them heart rate goals that are in the fat burning zone. So it's just, so for someone, you know, who's like 50, that would be somewhere around 105 to 115, maybe 120 beats per minute. Not that hard to do. A brisk walk can do it. But to keep that heart rate sustained in that zone for at least 30 minutes, if not 45 minutes, that's something you could do at home with a pair of tennis shoes. You don't need any equipment. You don't need a gym membership. You're not going to run the risk of contracting, you know, any viruses by doing, by walking outside. Um, and it should be something that's enjoyable for you. Sometimes I get in a rut. I have multiple options available to me. I do Beachbody on demand. I do Peloton. I am very fortunate. My husband and I in 20 years, 25 years of marriage have consistently given each other exercise stuff <laughs> for gifts. So now we have a treadmill. We have a bike. We have um, a you know, cheap Walmart smart TV where we can download programs. There's tons of free stuff on YouTube. I love doing weights. I love doing hit. I love doing resistance training. I love walking. I love biking. I love it all. What I don't love is swimming because it jacks with my hair. Um, so, uh, I look like Monica from friends. Yeah, I get that a lot. That and Tina Fey, but I've gotten Courtney Cox for a long time, but thank you. Um, I just don't want to ever have too much plastic surgery done. Um, okay. So studies have found a link that exercising at least 30 minutes per day has a reduction of early death. 30 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day. Um, okay, so number eight, alcoholic drinks. Now we are in the middle of Mardi Gras season. This is not a conversation I'm happy to be having with myself right now, but you know, we know this and this should be no surprise. Drinking too much alcohol harms your health. How much is too much? There is a definitive guide for that. In the US, the standard drink is defined as 12 ounces of beer, eight ounces of malt liquor, five ounces of wine, or 1.5 ounces of hard liquor. According to the CDC, excessive drinking is four or more drinks in a single occasion for women, five or more drinks in a single occasion for men, eight or more drinks per week for women, 15 or more drinks per week for men. Why men? Well, they're bigger and they can process it a little bit slower. Um, most people know that excessive drinking can cause short-term problems like injuries, <laughs> um, high blood pressure, certain cancers, heart disease, memory and cognition problems, mental health issues, alcohol dependence, etc. Um, 
So number nine, hours spent sleeping. Of all of the things about my health that have taken the biggest hit in perimenopause and age, it is sleep. I used to sleep, uh, no problem, no problem. And literally, I have to battle waking up in the middle of the night. I have had to change. <laughs> we usually drink because of a man. <laughs> I have had to change sleep. I have to practice good hygiene habits, unplug the phone, make sure I'm not looking at bright lights, set up everything in my room so it's going to, um, you know, set up everything in your life. So in, in your room, in your mind, you know, that it's going to promote good sleep. Get back into meditation and journaling. Headspace is my favorite meditation app. I get no money from them. Go check it out. They have excellent sleep casts, things to help you relax at night. I'm, how young am I? I am 53 years young. Uh, yeah, I'm 53. I was born in 1968. I graduated from high school in 86. So I am 53 and menopause has tried to kill me, but I'm fighting it tooth and nail. Okay, so the National Sleep Foundation recommends seven to nine adults continuously per night. Um, so um, so new research continues to lead, well, they call it sleep debt when we're running low on sleep, when we're not getting that consistent seven to hours a night, it raises your risk of heart disease, attack, stroke, cortisol levels go up, all of the above. Oh, my favorite meditation app is called Headspace, H-E-A-D-S-P-A-C-E. -E. Someone type it out in the comments for her so she can see it. Um, so, you know, as a health professional, I don't just look at weight. I never start lecturing someone about you need to lose weight to be healthy. That is just out of my vocabulary. I've coached too many, too many thousands of women to know that this is a complicated and effort and that someone with normal weight can be very, very, very unhealthy. There are multiple markers of disease. Women come to me to lose weight in my clinic, but I stop, I don't even mention their weight. We just talk about markers of health markers of good health, including, you know, cholesterol and blood pressure and, um, blood sugar levels and visceral fat. And, you know, so I'm able to have really frank, honest conversations with them and they walk out of my clinic feeling empowered that they, it's so much more than just the scale and not to like live and die by that number. It's, you know, and what are you focused on? Do you just want to look good in a dress for a wedding? That's quick weight loss. I can send you to some other programs to make that happen, but you might sacrifice muscle mass or inflammation in order to make that happen. I'm here to talk about you playing with your grandchildren or climbing a mountain at 80 or being able to get off the toilet at 75 without a bar to hold you up. So those are the things we focus on in the Galveston diet and what is my mission in life is to try to help people stay and live, live not only longer lives, but a better quality of life through good nutrition, exercise, and stress reduction. Um, if you want to, um, Learn more about Galveston Diet. Check us out at Galveston Diet up here. Everybody double crap on the screen. I'm going to go to the questions right now and see. So everybody have a contest. Double tap the screen really, really fast. Um, and it's called power tapping. It's all these new things that I've learned. If you'd like to follow us, click the follow button. I'd love for you to be a part of the Galveston Diet family. And remember, if you have any questions, drop them in the Q&A box down below, and I will be happy to get to them. Um, okay, I'm power tapping till my heart, till the heart thing explodes. So everybody keep double tapping. Um, so that our little heart thing explodes. This is an experiment. It's super fun. Okay. Um, my thoughts on collagen powder. So I take collagen powder every day. I do it for vanity. I am very, very vain and um, am fighting cellulite and wrinkles. Even on a thinner person, cellulite hanging off of bone is no more attractive than with some muscle behind it. So I have done some research several years ago and found studies done on Verisol type collagen, a very specific type of collagen that showed where they did laser, it was randomized control studies, which you can't get much better than that. And they actually did laser measurements of the depth of wrinkles, of fine lines and wrinkles, and they did a visual analog scales of cellulite and they did see improvement so my favorite brand is from sparkle we actually sell it on our website i partnered with them every time i talked about it they would run out they would <laughs> and so i bought a truckload so that our students in the galveston diet could have it it also has how it's called their skin boost it has high aluronic acid and vitamin c it's very reasonably priced i drink it every day I mix it with my collagen in a big thing of water, and it's what I have all afternoon. So if you go to shop.galvestondiet.com, or you just go to our website, click on supplements, you'll see it there. You can go check it out. Um, now, if you find another version of Verisol collagen that you're happy with or is cheaper or whatever, use it. It's fine. You know, just be happy. Um, hang on. It got really dark. The sun, we're having some cloudy issues. Let me put some lights on in here. Hang on. Um, there we go. It's a little bit better. Okay, um, 
so, okay. Does your pro uh, so we have two weeks of vegan vegetarian meal plans. We have lots of vegetarian and vegans in the Galveston diet, though we are not vegan specific. So, you know, we have some of our meal plans will have meat options. We do a lot of um, seafood, um, but we do have very successful vegans and vegetarians. We even have people with celiac disease during our program who are gluten free. You know, basically, we're a science program. We teach you the science behind anti inflammatory information, and then you make the food choices that make sense to you there. Our meal plans are only guidelines. Um, any supplements to reduce cortisol production? So um, you have to be careful when you think about that. Our bodies need cortisol. It is a natural stress response. We don't want to interfere with the natural, like the way cortisol is produced. You want to stop stimulating cortisol production and you do that through stress relief, okay? We don't want to stop the production of cortisol. We need it to survive. Without it, it's called Addison's disease and you will die. Okay, what we need to do is stop stimulating the production of cortisol by decreasing our stress levels. So you cannot take a handful of supplements of anything and expect it to reverse poor life choices or poor nutritional choices. So I know a lot of people are selling a lot of shit here online and I, I call them out when I see them or when they're pointed out to me. But when you're talking about cortisol reduction, you need to lower your stress levels. Lower your stress levels. That is the number one way. And that's going to be meditation, journaling, yoga, prayer, whatever that looks like for you, exercise. But swallowing a handful of supplements is not the way. Is not the way. And if, if someone is promising you this, they're just trying to make money. Okay? Um, let's see. What protein powder is good for women over 50? I don't need a protein powder because I get plenty of protein from my nutritional choices from whole foods. So I really don't have one that I recommend. If you're a vegan or vegetarian, you want to look for one that is pea, pea protein based. Some of them can have a lot of fillers and additives and artificial colors and flavors. You need to read those labels very, very carefully. But for, um, for me and for the Galveston Diet followers, we find that we get enough protein to support our bodily needs through whole foods without having to supplement with a powder. Um, how much is our program? Well, thank you for asking. The Galveston Diet uh, base program, the, the online you know, basic program is a one-time fee of $59 and you have lifetime access to all of the education, the videos, and the information. The gold program, which is the basic program plus all the downloadable guides and aids is $99. And then the platinum program, which is all of that, um, plus our a month in our boot camp, which is our online coaching program, is um, right now on sale 15% off. So if you go, and I have a TikTok sale, so if you just go to the, up here, and you go to the link in bio, it'll take you there, and you'll see 15% off platinum, but there's a code TikTok15, tik 2 a k 15 which should work for all the programs if you're interested. So you can go check it out online. Um, okay, what's your take on an IUD over 40 years old? Damn, that's impressive. Um, you know, it's a foreign body and it's been in there a long time. Number one, you need to get it confirmed. It's still there. And do you know it's still there? Do they see the strings? Have you had some kind of an x-ray or some kind of imaging to make sure the IUD is still there? And then you need to decide if you want to have it out or not. You know, it's been there 40 years, but it is a foreign body. But I, you know, that would be a long conversation I'd have with a patient as far as taking it out, you know, because taking it out may cause more harm than leaving it in. I don't know. I mean, that's, that's not a one-stop shop answer. That's a very individual decision based on the patient. <clears throat> but that's a long time. Huh. I don't know. If you find out the secret to having a smooth neck, please let me know. I burned myself. I had Mardi Gras this weekend. I decided to get out the curling iron. And look what I did. Um, I do not have a smooth neck. This is one of the parts of my body that bothers this aging. I'm, I've been, here's the problem. I was so great about my face, protecting my face, sunscreen on my face, creams on my face, potions on my face. It looks great. I ignored my neck and let it get in my chest. And now it, my, my chest and neck look 10 years older than the rest of me. So working on that, I'll let you know, but look, you can see right here. I don't have any good, that's, you know, I'm an ob -gen. It's really out of my area. Uh, Dr. Prem Tripathi, he's got lots of great advice. He's one of my favorite plastic surgeons on this app. Um, 
Can you do the Galveston diet? You're 25. Well, sweetheart, of course you can, but we have a lot of information in there really specific to perimenopause and menopause. I have a whole section on hormones. So um, there is a program called Galveston Prime. It is, you can find it on our website. It's 19 bucks, one-time fee, and it was written for younger patient, not patient, younger students. So it was written by a nutrition science major and a biologist together under my tutelage, but it's done in language that's more conducive to a younger person. The meal plans are really for maybe for one, not for cooking for a family. So I think you'd be better off following Galveston Prime. You can find it at the website. Check it out there. Your cycle change happening more, not less, at 52. So the bets are all bets are off as far as what your periods are going to do when you start going through the changes associated with perimenopause and menopause. Your cycles could be further apart. They could be closer together. Anytime you notice changes, it warrants a talk with your physician just to make sure we're not missing that this is a sign of something pathologic and it's not just something menopausal. So um, does the Platinum Program give meal plans? Yes. Yes, the meal plans are included at all levels of the program, platinum, gold, and signature. Um, is it bad to be on no birth control ever in life? Well, it just depends on if you want to be pregnant or not. So um, there are people who never use contraception their whole lives, and they use other methods. Their husbands have vasectomies. They use natural family planning that work for them. They use condoms. They use whatever. So um, there are definite health benefits. You know, we use birth control pills or oral contraception or other forms of contraception to treat medical issues. Um, my daughters both started on that in their teens for acne, and it was the only thing that worked. We kind of tried everything else, um, and they both needed to have their testosterone levels decreased. Otherwise, they would scar. Their acne was so bad. So no, I mean, if you don't need it and we're not treating a medical problem, there's no reason if you, if you want to be pregnant um, and, and, you're, and you have a reliable form of contraception if you don't want to be pregnant outside of hormonal birth control. So you're okay. Um, let's see. How do I feel about the 5-2 fasting? So there are medical benefits to 5-2. So you, if those of you know the Galveston diet, intermittent fasting is one of the important components. I preach and teach a 16-8, which is daily intermittent fasting. Not all of my students follow that. I have a lot of people in shift work who really struggle with daily fasting because their clocks switch constantly. So they do five twos. Um, I don't love it because it doesn't build a daily habit. Galveston Diet is all about habit, new habits that you can sustain for the rest of your life. But because of their life situation, they practice a five two and feels like it works better for them. It's not my first choice, but it is not a bad option. Um, yes, the platinum, all the programs give meal plans, all of the levels, you will have seven weeks of meal plans available to you. Um, Yes, by re we, we have seen that by reducing inflammation. Inflammation is one of the factors that drives visceral fat. You can have a decrease in visceral fat deposition, absolutely. And that's kind of the beauty of the Galveston diet because we are an anti-inflammatory nutrition program. Um, taking metformin with intermittent fasting, you need to talk to your physician about it. Um, if you are new to the Galveston diet, new to intermittent fasting, and you are under a doctor's care for medical condition, you must talk to them, especially if it's for any treatment of blood control issues or diabetes, and make sure that they are okay with this. Um, all right, guys, I'm going to jump off. So great talking to you. Check us out at galvestondiet.com to learn some more about the program, and uh, we'll chat again soon.